Every year, peacocks shed their magnificent tail feathers. It must be a relief. They are heavy, and they attract hungry predators. But when they grow back, it's perhaps an even greater relief. Peahens only mate with well-endowed males. No fancy display, no sex. No passing of genes to the next generation. That's something every living thing is programmed to do. It's worth fighting for, maybe even dying for. In fact, from an evolutionary perspective, sex is more important than life itself. Female praying mantises have been known to turn their dates into dinner. But every praying mantis alive today had a father who took that risk. Pacific salmon give everything they have to get upriver to spawn. Once they've succeeded, they wait for death. And while we won't trade our lives for sex, most of us will risk death to protect our children, the carriers of our genes. Evolution is a story written over countless generations. To inherit and pass on genes is to be part of that story. That's our immortality. That's what connects us to humans on into the future. That's what's connected us to all of our ancestors in the past. That's what connects us to the ancestors that were fish, the ancestors that were protozoans, and the ancestors that were bacteria. It's the single thread that connects all of life on this planet. Sex and genes, driving behavior, driving evolution. Southwest Texas, roundups have been a big part of history. I mean, we have cattle roundups. Lately, we have rattlesnake roundups, but my crew is not here to look for cattle or rattlesnakes. We're here to look for a particular species of lizard that uh, has a different reproductive strategy than most organisms that live on this earth. Hey, look, there's one. There's one right there, right there. Right there, right there. There's one, there's one. Jerry Johnson and his students are after a species made up only of females, which give birth without having had sex. Each egg contains a complete set of its mother's genes. It develops and grows without any contribution from a male. And so each baby lizard is an exact copy, a clone of its mother. Some people think that they uh, actually have to have some kind of a lesbian uh, behavior where a female mounts a female to, to get the eggs to develop. That hasn't been really proven yet, but it, it's an interesting hypothesis. Regardless of how they do it, these lizards have mastered the art of cloning which raises a fundamental question. As far as these lizards go, the big question, I think, is they do so well as all female species. Uh, why is there sex? I mean, are males really necessary? Immersed as we all are in a culture that extols male courage, 
grace, self-confidence, passion. Questioning the necessity of males is rare. Men almost never do it, and women do it most often in a fit of pique. Most of the time we're happy to say vive la difference and get on with things. But for evolutionary biologists, the question is real. Given the efficiency of cloning, why would any female put up with the complications of sexual reproduction? For starters, males can't bear offspring and rarely share the burden of raising them. Then there's the fact she only gets to pass on 50% of her genes. Not to mention all the time, energy and bother involved in courting and mating. Nevertheless, virtually every new life on the planet is a result of sexual reproduction and not asexual cloning. So males must play a critical role, and sex must offer an advantage. Whatever it is, it's buried deep within us. All my life, I've wanted to be a mom. It's an instinct, it's a feeling, it's something that you just know you want to do. I've done such a 180. It's, it's amazing. I never thought I'd hear myself say that, but I really, really wanted to have children. The itty bitty spider went up the water spout. Through seven years, multiple operations, and more tests and procedures than either cares to remember, Sharon and JT pursued their dream of parenthood. She really had this burning desire to have children. We just didn't want to give up without exploring every possible angle and every possible way of doing it. And there's a, there's a lot of different ways. I, I was unaware of how many, you know, what science can do nowadays. I mean, I learned a lot of, along the way as well. Naya is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I can't imagine my life before Naya. I think you're hungry. The biological imperative, as we all know, is to pass on genes. Most species on Earth use sexual reproduction. Why do this? There has to be some fundamental biological evolutionary reason for sexual reproduction. This has been one of the major questions in biology for a very long time. For 25 years, Robert Reinhook has been returning to the remote hills of Sonora, Mexico, hoping to find clues to the enduring mystery. Why sex? In this dry and forbidding landscape, he seeks those clues in the lives of fish. To study the sexual process, which appears to be normal, predominant in most things, I study the diseases of sex, the pathologies of it. Little fish, in this case, that live in the Mexican deserts that have abandoned the sexual process. And the beauty of this is it's a natural experiment because side by side in these same little puddles we'll have sexual reproducers, we'll have asexual reproducers, all competing in these tiny little simple environments. I could try to study this in a, in a massive environment like an African savanna, but I can't manage an African savanna. With my capabilities I can manage a few small pools like this and for 30 years I've been coming back to this part of Mexico to study what goes on in these pools. We got some. This is a good sample here. Look at how black these fish are. Wow. Look at the pigment on them. 